Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a CLL patient myself and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And today I'm going to be presenting information on some of the top abstracts from the European Hematologic Association's annual meeting. I'm now going to discuss NX5948, which offered promising results in relapsed refractory CLL. And what's the bottom line on this? In heavily treated chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia patients with poor prognosis and few options, the BTK to greater, NX5948, saw seven out of 10 patients treated respond. Who performed the research and where was it presented? Dr. Kim Linton led an international group of researchers to present the oral abstract of these encouraging first results on the very last day of the European Hematologic Association's annual meeting in Barcelona in 2024, or EHA 2024. Let me give some background. The background for this study is similar to that of the other BTK, BTK degraders. CLL, SLL, treatment was revolutionized when it was understood that cancer cells were addicted, they were dependent for their survival on the proliferation, uh, for their survival and proliferation on signaling through the B cell receptor or BCR. Several medications have been developed to block this pathway, but by far the most impactful have been the BTK inhibitors, starting with ibrutinib and followed by acalabrutinib, xanabrutinib, and per pertabrutinib. These oral medications, small molecules, have proven superior to all prior chemoimmunotherapies and have become one of the mainstays of treatment, prolonging life and offering patients who were previously out of options new hopes. However, CLL and SLL cells can often eventually develop mutations that cause these medications to stop working. Finding new ways to block BTK when resistance develop would be a boon to patients. BTK degraders, such as the experimental BGB1667, work differently. So does NX5948. While they are still small molecules, they can be taken orally, they have a complex structure, and instead of blocking the BTK, which is an enzyme or a kinase, they tag the whole molecule for destruction and degradation. The BTK is completely destroyed or broken down. Essentially, its components are recycled and used to make new proteins in the cell. This destruction, of course, leads to a full stop of the B cell receptor or BCR signaling which leads to very good control of the CLL and SLL. Moreover, at least theoretically, resistance to other BTK blockers should not influence its efficacy because it has an entirely different mechanism of action. So we're going to focus here on NX5948. NX948-301 is a phase one, first in human trial um, evaluating safety, tolerability, and the clinical activity of NX5948, a novel oral degrader in patients with relapsed refractory CLL and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or NHL. In order to be eligible for this trial, patient had had to have at least two or more prior therapies, measurable or other evaluated diseases, and had to be relatively fit. Um, and that, by that we meant an ECOG score of 0 to 1, or at worst capable of all but the most strenuous activities. The aim of this trial is to evaluate safety and tolerability of NX5948 and establish maximum tolerable dose and recommended a phase 2 go forward dose. So let's look at the results. This is very early. There was 46 patients uh, that were enrolled, 16 
with CLL and 30 with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, of which six had central nervous system or CNS involvement. And there were six different doses that they were enrolled at. 50 milligrams for seven, 100 milligrams for eight, 200 milligrams for nine, and 300 milligrams for 12, 450 milligrams for six, and 600 milligrams for four. The median age was 64. Two out of three were men. The median lines of prior th therapies were four, which are ranged from two to 14 including for CLL, BCL2 inhibitors, such as venetoclax, plus a covalent or non-covalent BTKI, ibrutinib, acalabrutinib, xanabrutinib, and pertabrutinib. And there was um, 14 of 16 patients um, had had that history. A PI3 kinase inhibitor, duvalisib and idolisib, in five out of six, in five out of 16. Baseline mutations were common in the CLL, with BTK mutations in 5 out of 12, TP53 mutations in 5 out of 12, and PCL gamma 2 mutations, which is a downstream gain of function mutation that turns on the BCR pathway again in 2 out of 12. Overall, a very difficult group to treat. In the overall population, which was the 46 patients, median duration of follow-up was 3.4 months, but it ranged up to more than 20 months. Let's look at the adverse events first. NX5948 was well tolerated across all doses with no treatment related serious adverse ev events. No one dropped out of the trial because of adverse events. The most common um, emergent adverse events or TEAEs, treatment emergent adverse events, was bruising which was seen in almost four out of 10 patients, but all of it was mild. Low platelets, or the medical term is thrombocytopenia, seen in 37% of patients, uh, uh, of which 10.9% was more serious, uh, grade three or higher. Low neutrophils, or neutropenia, which was seen in 26% of patients, of which 19.6% was grade three or higher. A no atrial fibrillation or flutter was reported. Only once was the dose reduced in a lymphoma patient who had a rash at the 450 milligram dose that did not recur with rechallenge. So what was the efficacy? NX5948 pharmacokinetics supported once daily dosing. BDK degrading was measured and was fast, strong, and sustained in all patients regardless of the absolute BTK um, starting dose, tumor type, or dose. In CLL, uh, out of 10 ev disease evaluable patients, seven uh, partial remissions, or PRs, were documented at doses of between 50 and 200 milligrams. So that was an overall response rate of 70%. In summary, these are very early findings of the first in human study of NX5948, and it demonstrates an encouraging safety profile in non Hodgkin's lymphoma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. No patient dropped the drug due to adverse events. Solid responses were observed in heavily pretreated, challenging population of patients, some with BTK resistance mutations, high high-risk molecular features, and even central nervous system involvement in the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma patients. The l amount of cancer they had to begin with, the tumor type, and the dose didn't seem to make a difference. The 70% response rate C in CLL patients may improve over time as these are very early results. I wish there were more than 10 patients uh, whose results were reported, but that data will be forthcoming. What we already know at this point suggests that NX5948 will be used in future CLL treatments to extend the success already seen with other agents that block BTK. Additional research at higher doses and longer treatment durations is ongoing, but these results are encouraging in a group of patients who are near the end of the line for their treatment options. On the website, 
we provide a link to the EHA abstract, which is titled, Latest Results from an Ongoing First in Human 1A slash B Study of Annex 5948, a selective Bruton tyrosine kinase, BTK degrader, in patients with ref relapsed refractory CLL and other B-cell malignancies. Thanks for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together.